You're listening to Actors with Issues with Juan Ayala, a podcast of actors, by actors, and for actors. Patrick, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, come on the show. Welcome. Sure. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, so before we dive into Insidious, The Red Door, uh, you have gotten to work with so many fantastic directors throughout your career, um, to name a few, uh, Mike Nichols, Trevor Nunn, Joel Schumacher, Todd Field. Uh, so who would you say, as a director, has had the biggest impact on not just your career, but on you as an individual that you sort of saw as a mentor, perhaps? Huh. Um, I, well, I think there's, uh, man, that's tough because I, I, there's so many great ones that I've worked with that have been so important to me for different reasons. I mean, I'll kind of bookend it with, you know, obviously James Wan, this is now our seventh movie together, at least in some capacity. Um, so he's incredibly influential on me in the past 15 years. Um, but I probably, I mean, Mike Nichols really gave me my film career. I mean, he really did. So I, I think it all starts with, with Mike and his, uh, his knowledge, his ease, his, his grace on set, um, and really making, making the actors feel comfortable in situations that really shouldn't, shouldn't have been as comfortable as they were. You know, <laughs> I think we should have been more nervous. You know, the, the, the few of us that it was our first job and we're working opposite Al Pacino and Meryl Streep. And I think the reason <laughs> that we all felt and Emma Thompson and, you know, Mary Louise Parker. So I think the reason that we felt comfortable was because of, of the collective reverence for Mike Nichols. So um, his sort of skill and grace is something that I, I, I certainly carry and his humor, really, that I, I carry with me for sure. And I can't recall which director said this, but he sort of suggested that every director should take an acting class to get the perspective of uh -huh. an actor's process and to sort of empathize with that process. And being on the opposite end of that as an actor making their uh, directorial debut, what are you taking away from this experience having learned that you'll feel you can implement uh, or at least keep in mind in future performances? Yeah, it's interesting. I've heard that kind of comment too, I, but you know, Here's the thing. I think an actor, I think a good actor has to be able to take a note that's like, hey, you need to tilt your head this way and look this way because that's where the light is hitting you. And can you hit that? And then that's up to the actor to go, OK, I need to give myself a reason to look up here and do that. Mm -hmm. But you're not always going to get a director that's going to go, here's your motivation for looking up <laughs> to the right. Like, and you got to be OK with that. So you can't be precious. You really can't. Actors can't. Yeah. You can't. You just because some of the best directors that I've have had no that I've been with have had no concept of they would not be what you would call actors directors they're not talking about the scene with me like deeply as much as someone else would but that doesn't make them a not a great director i mean right. this is a this is a filmmaker's medium right so uh, if this guy needs me to look a certain way because the way the light hits half of my face and i can't move then that's what I have to do. Like, I can't sit here and like, so sure. And it'd be great if everyone took an acting lesson to understand acting. But also I think a lot of actors could use a directing lesson to really understand what really makes a movie because it's not, uh, no offense to actors. I've been with for 30 something years, but it's not just about you. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a medium that's made and it's a visual medium. And you have to be able to, to do your homework to, I can work with directors that literally will just be completely physical. I want you to look a certain way, do this, make this face. And you can't, you can't be grumpy that they're not discussing uh, every uh, beat in the scene and what your intention is, or it, like, give me better direction from the actor's perspective, because you, 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 that's the homework then that, that I have to go, okay, this is not that type of director. I need to, you know, some guy that's been doing music videos or commercials may not come in with having studied with actors. So you've got to be able to, to do your homework too. And I think a lot of actors maybe just want the director to, you need to understand my process. And you want to say, well, you're in their movie. I got news for you. So maybe you need to understand their process. You know what I mean? Right. Absolutely. And being a man of the, of the musical theater and with music being such a staple in the horror genre, 
Um, yeah. I mean, so many horror films have those iconic themes, like, you know, Jaws, Psycho, Halloween. Yeah. Um, what was the collaboration like between you and Joseph Bashar during the filmmaking and editing process? Yeah, it, that's a great question. It was, uh, it was awesome. I mean, I really, we started, we started several years ago, just kicking around ideas, you know, just even, even instruments that he wanted to, you know, let's maybe have some woodwinds in this instead of just the typical strings, screechy strings that had been in the other ones. Like he wants to grow as a musician too. Um, I'm a musician, so I could sit there and talk with him and say, hey, can we, can, can there be a change there in the bridge? Or, or, or I feel like that's a, like, it's like a measure too long. Can you, can it, can the melody float a little more? I need more emotional release here. Um, and I think, so we, we, we certainly push each other in a, in a super healthy way. I love talking shop with him and, and have for years. So this was nothing new. It's just now I could, now I had some authority to be able to go, Hey, we should do this or do this. You know, I need something. I want to hit us in the face right from the very beginning, from the opening frame. I want us to know, Oh God, we are in for an insidious movie. Um, and he knocked it out of the park. I think, I mean, the, the opening, sequence with music and sound i think it's awesome it's exactly what i wanted so i i love 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 joe the scenes you're sort of you've been involved with the horror genre now for for quite some time and let's say you got another opportunity to sort of tackle another an original uh horror screenplay and directed for that are there any particular um scream queens or kings that you would love to work with in that sort of <laughs> situation oh that's good um, well, I gotta say, after seeing Mia Goth in uh, both Ty West films, yeah. uh, she's she's pretty awesome. She'd be fun. She'd be fun to work with. Yeah, there's a lot out there. And to be honest with you, I mean, when my when my you know movie wives have been Vera Farmiga for for many films and Rose Byrne for a, for several as well. Now I'm I'm in pretty good company with uh, with Scream Queens. So, yeah. but yeah, I was really struck by Pearl and Hex and uh, I, I, I really dug this movie and she, she's fantastic. So that was pretty cool. That'd be fun. You know, I feel like almost everyone has had sort of some type of experience with the paranormal, whether it's a dream or just that uneasy feeling you get when you're in a new space or something. So are there any urban legends or maybe mythology out there that you feel haven't gotten the right adaptation for the big screen um sorry got lights spooky lights or <laughs> speaking <motion> of <laughs> uh it's okay just a motion sensor i'm, I'm way too still i move my hands around keep the lights <laughs> um are there any urban legends oh that's interesting i don't know i don't i don't know enough of sort of urban legends i always feel i'm, I'm i get fascinated by different cultures different states some version of like a Bigfoot type creature. Mm -hmm. Like in Florida, I grew up in Florida and there's like this thing called the uh, legend of the skunk ape. I don't know what it was like this putrid smelling, you know, half man or like, or was it just like some homeless guy running through the woods? I don't know. Um, but that's an old one. The New Jersey devil has also got some cool history. Um, I feel like every state's got something kind of fun. That's what makes them interesting. So yeah, there's nothing that I would want to tell, but, um, but I am fascinated by those sort of urban legends, specifically kind of creatures that are specific to one area. I think that's, that's pretty cool. But earlier you mentioned sort of actors can't be too precious with uh, their process and with sort of expecting directors and collaborators to yeah. take the time to, to sort of, you know, break that down with them so uh, we always wrap up with this question in 10 words or less what advice would you give to a young actor oh gosh act wherever you can mm -hmm. it's a team sport you don't become a better pick a sport you don't become a better baseball player by not playing baseball so do it wherever you can and wherever you can there it's fine <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Patrick, thank you so, so much for taking the time to chat with us and for no uh, such a wonderful franchise. I mean, I'm such a horror fan. So both, you know, the Insidious right. and Conjuring have been such favorites. Um, oh, yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good to talk to you. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to subscribe to Actors with Issues on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts and visit our YouTube channel for full video interviews. Actors with Issues is executive produced and hosted by Juaniala. See you next time.